Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, Expansionscapes. I am Olga, I'm a shamanic healing practitioner, a writer of spiritual fiction and nonfiction, an artist, and a deep diver into the world within and the world without, using my physical perception and my non-physical psychic perception. This is my second video in the series of discovering, healing, and learning how to experience and feel emotions once again. And the first video, I focused on the emotion of loneliness. In this video, I'm going to take a look at the emotion of joy. And my intention here is to share my deep diving experience into my own self, my own emotion of joy, and demonstrate how such a thing can be done without necessarily feeling uh, too much pain or struggling or difficulties and to show that there is a way to uh, discover your subconscious and to heal things and to feel better eventually. And my intention for discovering these emotions and healing to experience them comes from this understanding that I recently became aware of that in my perception, each of our emotions are like colors on a color wheel that we use to paint with our life experience. So if we find ourselves that we experience our lifetime only experiencing maybe a small number of emotions that have become socially acceptable while ignoring or denying or shoving down uh, other emotions or maybe using substances to not feel those emotions, numbing ourselves against other emotions. Uh, I feel like such a life experience can be considered like a monochromatic drawing where there's nothing wrong with a monochromatic drawing. You know, you are experiencing, you're exploring, you know, one, one color and uh, every shade of that color, or if you're going to use more colors, okay, well, that's still like a limited kind of painting, you know? Um, but I, I'm interested for myself to remember to learn again how to paint my life with as many emotions as I can possibly feel. Like, I want to free all of the colors on my color, emotional color palette of my life. And I feel like if I heal myself and, you know, discover myself and free myself enough and remember how to actually feel emotions in a healthy way without, I mean, there's got to be that way. <laughs> if I can relearn or teach myself again to feel my emotions in a healthier, more free way, I feel that my life is going to be more colorful, more rich and more joyous, more fun to live. So my intention is to share my process and also to motivate whoever might be interested in doing this for themselves to go and have a deep dive into their own emotions and through self-awareness become more free and make better choices, make those free decisions to perhaps be able to feel more emotions. And some of the stuff that I will be sharing here uh, will resonate with other people, with you perhaps. And some of the stuff that I share here will not resonate because it applies personally to me. But I hope that um, by sharing this, I can give you ideas on how to explore yourself and how to free yourself and feel more emotions and make your life more colorful. So I asked my guys which emotion I should dive into next and they told me joy. And that was about the time when Christmas was just over and the New Year's Eve was coming up. And I thought, oh, okay, that, that kind of makes sense. There's a lot of celebration. 
But I was also ready for something heavier. Like I told them, it's okay. I'm strong enough to deal with things like anger, fear, pain, you know, I can do it. I had this warrior spirit in me and, um, well, they don't force me to do anything. And I thought, okay, they probably have reasons. So, um, and it turns out that I got really sick for like 10 days on New Year's Eve. My whole family got sick with COVID. And then in retrospect, I, so, and sorry for my bad voice still, uh, and runny nose. In retrospect, I was thinking, um, if I were in bed sick, exploring something heavy like anger, fear, pain, suffering or something, I was thinking I would probably be sick much longer. And what I ended up doing instead, because I followed my guide's uh, suggestion, was I was always diving into joy, discovering joy, healing myself to be able to feel joy. Um, and so I was only sick for like nine or 10 days or something. So there's an example of sometimes how our guides know stuff that's good for us. Anyway, so when I went uh, diving into joy uh, for the first time, I saw like a huge black tsunami washing over me again and again and again. And it was just so overpowering and huge. And I was wondering, what is this tsunami? Uh, because even though it felt really dark, like it comes from pain and suffering, even though it feels really, really dark, but it felt like I have an agreement with this tsunami that, um, yes, I know you're coming for me and I know you're going to uh, completely wash me over. And somehow it felt like it was right, but from a very unhealthy perspective. So I was wondering what this tsunami meant for me. Um, and then my guide suggested that I search for instances where I can find um, joy in my life. So I, I was meditating in my room and I started looking around my room, searching for joy. <laughs> and um, I saw two of my cats sleeping on my bed. And immediately I registered joy. And it was really a kind of a new feeling for me because I never really consciously tried to register, you know, like realize that, oh, I'm feeling joy right now. But this was very conscious. It was like, wow, joy is so close. My cats are sleeping here. And I felt joy immediately after looking, uh, as I looked at them. So I thought that was a great exercise just to consciously um, notice when do we feel joy and from what, what makes us feel joy. Uh, and basically, actually everything made me feel joy. When I was looking around the room, I looked at the wall color that I have. I love this crazy green color. I looked at my drawings. I looked. I just looked at everything in my room because I chose everything that was in my room. Everything brought me joy. But it was also interesting that um, as soon as I've, I, my system registered, realized, recognized that I was feeling joy from something, I would suddenly be washed over like that tsunami with a lot of reasons not to feel joy. And it was like my joy was dimmed by all that darkness. And when I felt joy, it just came out feeling like a golden, white golden light coming from the center of me. And in the center, throughout like long term meditations where I just experience silence, this is the place where I experience a void where there's nothing, but it's not like a nothing, nothing. It's, it's that, you know, I would say like sacred chaos of our souls. It's a place where everything is possible. It's a place of, I would say sacred fertility, like, um, like in that chaos, anything can be born out of this chaos. And it depends on our soul's desire 
what we bring forth to be born, like an, a, a sort of a creator within ourselves as a soul. So I saw that from this void, something came out of nothing. You know this phrase, something comes out of nothing, uh, because it seems very illogical and impossible and magical. And it is, in a way. We created that. So I noticed that the joy was the light that came from that darkness, uh, sacred darkness, I would say, within me. And the color was uh, like white in the middle and kind of golden on the outside. And this is kind of how I see energy. I see it as colors. And that light, just by the qualities and the emotions in that light, um, I felt that it had something very, very similar, but not the same as uh, light that I have experienced on a number of occasions in my life. I would call it psychic experiences or spiritual experiences. It's hard to put a name on this. From childhood and after my near-death experience, I have had these out-of-body experiences where um, one of them was um, seeing the light. And that's something that people refer to as the source, consciousness, God. I like to call it everything. <laughs> um, it, it was something similar to that. And I figured um, I got this symbol or analogy to explain uh, the relationship between that light, which is the source consciousness, and the light that I felt as joy in me. Um, so that light is like the sun. And in my other um, out-of-body experiences, I felt before that I was a kind of like going towards the light and um, that light has, you know, all the answers to every single question that you might have. The questions that come from that sacred um, emptiness, uh, darkness within, it gives birth to questions. But as soon as you give birth to a question, that light always has an answer. And I felt this really cool connection of me here. I can observe this happening here, and I can observe the light. Um, and I am I am the observer that's observing the interaction. I noticed three stages. Um, so there's this sun, and I feel like, you know, uh, we say source consciousness, light, if we say that that source consciousness, the light, is the sun, then I am a part of a ray of the sun. It's like this is my relationship as a soul, as a consciousness, to the everything. And I felt like the ray does not contain only me, but it had almost like a soul family of consciousnesses within a ray. But that's just going far away from this topic of me experiencing joy, or maybe not. Um, and then I see this ray, which is me, but also a part of the sun. You know, I will call it the sun because it it's a cool symbol, the sun and the ray, the ray, I am a part of the ray. And in this, I am also the part of the source consciousness. And that is a kind of like the str a string of energy stream of energy um, that is always kind of feeding me from here, I see it. And when I felt the joy come from uh, my inner void, I felt that it was connecting directly to um, that ray. And comparing that to the emotion of loneliness that I already discovered last time, I felt like the emotion of loneliness is more like a need, a desire. But the emotion of joy is just something that comes very naturally from the center. Um, back to seeing those cats and then ha experiencing a tsunami 
that washed over my joy and dimmed my joy. I, I didn't see it anymore. And the, ex the experience of joy was really, really short. Like it just lasted for as long as I realized that I was feeling joy. And as I realized it, it just went out uh, like a flame of a candle. And uh, that tsunami of dark stuff was basically all these reasons and all of the beliefs, all the assumptions that I hold within me, in my subconscious, you can say. And one of those, I started discovering those beliefs and talking about all of them would take maybe like a really long time. So I'm not going to, I'm just going to say a few things. So for example, I noticed that um, the fear of losing my cats one day, somehow there was a belief in me that, oh, you might experience a uh, loss of your cats one day. And wouldn't that be a horrible, painful experience? And to soften the blow, so to speak, don't go into too much joy enjoying your time with them. Because when the time comes to lose them, you're going to be so much more devastated. And it was kind of like a rule structure that says, hey, don't fall in love with them too much. You know, don't uh, feel so much joy. Don't be so open to this experience because when the time comes to lose them, um, you are going to be super devastated. And to soften that blow, stop experiencing joy as if um, in a weird way, me fooling myself that, oh yeah, well, I didn't like him anyway. I didn't really care about them anyway. And if you ask me consciously, do you believe this right now consciously? I will say, no, that's complete n nonsense. Yes, I know that one day we're not going to have each other, but does that mean that all this time that we shared together, we shouldn't experience joy? Uh, consciously, I can say this is complete nonsense. I don't want to believe this. I don't believe this consciously, but apparently, subconsciously, I believe this. So here's how self-awareness leads to empowerment in terms of um, reprogramming those subconscious beliefs that we still carry and we don't even realize we carry them, that actually have real, um, real effect on our lives. The real effect is that I am limited in my experiencing joy in my life because of those subconscious beliefs. So uh, I went into healing and letting them go using my shamanic practices that I learned from my teacher. And the reason I'm saying this is uh, the shamanic healing has worked for me very well so far. But I do not have an intention to say that, oh, shamanic healing is better than anything and everybody should do it. I don't. Uh, I think these things can be done with whatever um, methods, technique that each person likes, prefers, and feels comfortable with. I'm just sharing me that I use shamanic healing, but I'm not implying that that's the only healing for everyone. No. And I continued the same kind of healing for everything I looked at in the room, because this week I spent a long time in my room, in my bed, being sick. And I was just looking at everything in my room, such as the color of my wall, the green color. So first experience I feel felt when I look at the green color, I feel joy because I love very bright colors. Um, and then a lot of dark stuff came in, like, oh, what are people going to think about me? What is my mom going to say? Um, people are going to say I have absolutely no taste. I am ridiculous. No, 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 no all of these fears, all of those expectations, and a lot of that is connected to my perception of myself versus others' perception of myself. So it's like it goes very, very deep. And so I was looking into that healing, whatever I could, I noticed and letting go of whatever I noticed. And then slowly, slowly, every object in my room, I did the same process with every object in my room and slowly slowly I realized that when I look at that object and when I went through very deep healing healing all the dark stuff that comes up when I look at that object feel the joy and it's killed 
uh, when I lighten that load for every single object in my room, I'm suddenly looking at my room and I feel lighter. I feel actually more joy because I have reduced the amount of that tsunami. I can't say that I have completely let go of that tsunami, but I have let go of a significant part of it. And uh, I can feel it every time I look at those objects and I can actually feel joy. So it's a kind of process where I freed myself to allow myself to feel joy. So that was a kind of a process where I freed myself to allow myself to experience, to feel more joy in my life. And that was not a hundred percent. That was maybe, maybe this much, I don't know, less than 20, but the experience already feels very different. And then my guides suggested that, okay, you've looked at around at your room enough and you have figured out that you have a system that is blocking you from experiencing joy. And that system is like, it, it's very, very complex. There are many, many rules and expectations and structures. And you have realized this. Now, do you think that you are only capable of feeling joy from looking at the outside world or what you perceived as your outside world. Is there something within you that you can focus on that you can see, <laughs> look at and experience joy? And I did. And basically I looked at myself, at my being, you know, the I am consciousness. I am just me being me. And it hit me that, oh, wow, I can actually experience joy from just being me. And that is said in contrast to, you know, how we experience sometimes, or we, are, we have been taught to experience joy or like self-satisfaction when we have created something or been productive at something or gain some kind of some kind of reward like money or respect or something like that. We do many things in life like this, uh, some kind of an energy exchange. But just me being me, without producing anything, without creating anything, without receiving anything from anyone, just me being me. Um, and I felt that much. I had like a natural feeling that in a healthy way, we should be able to feel joy from just me being me. And I focused on that. And I saw that there was like an inkling of a beginning of joy of me being me. Uh, but I just saw like so much. It looked like metal plates covering up my chest, my heart. And um, not letting that joy be felt or experienced. And like, I, as I told you, the light that goes to the ray and then connected to the sun, which, um, as I said earlier, is like my symbol for source consciousness. And that was really a tough one. <laughs> I felt like those metal plates were very, very ancient and rusty. And um, they were actually created from like really, really hardcore pressure from my tears. Um, uh, tears of not having have um, a lot of experience of feeling like I was misunderstood and not accepted in multiple lifetimes not understood, not, not just not understood, but misunderstood to the point where uh, people made their conclusions that I am a terrible, evil person and, um, and just didn't accept me. And so I just, as a protective measure, I created this plate and uh, this, these like multiple metal plates, which basically prevented me, the real me, I am, from ever getting out. 
to protect myself from being misunderstood and not accepted or kicked out of some kind of a society. And I understood that in this lifetime, this karma, so to speak, still is very, has been very, very active up to about maybe two years ago, where I have had these psychic spiritual experiences all my life since childhood, but I have always hidden them from people because uh, e even though I tried to share them sometimes, I was always met with this kind of skepticism or cr looks at me like, oh my God, she's crazy. Or she, you know, or I've been told like, you have a lot of imagination. You can't tell what's real or not. Um, don't tell, don't share this. I've been told this by my family and some friends like don't share this because people are going to think you're crazy and people are not going to want to deal with you in any way shape or form because they will think that you're unpredictable and you're crazy and you're not a uh adequate person to do anything with <laughs> so so that was a cool thing to see how um an ancient multi-lifetime similar kind of karmic story within me uh, still continued in this life but also it was a wonderful experience where i could uh, let go of a huge chunk of it and considering that i've been doing this healing work for about three years now very very intense that i have let go of these beliefs that i need to be quiet about who I really am and what I'm really interested in. As you can see, I'm making this video on YouTube, which I would have never done before. Before, I used to pretend to be a normal person, an adequate person with adequate, proper education, with a proper job, with a proper apartment, with proper uh, clothes or something, and um, acting like a person who would be accepted. Uh, but now, uh, well, there I am. So, <laughs> so that feels very freeing. And uh, the metal plates just kind of like melted down. And I felt more of a connection when the, uh, the light of joy went to the ray. And there was more connection with the source. I don't like to call that light anything i don't like to call it source consciousness i don't like to call it god i don't like to call it um, anything because i just really feel like there's no name for it like every name that i use is just completely misrepresenting it but we are in the physical we need names and words so i'm going to use words like source consciousness um if you guys can think of another word please write it in the comments but i think it's just words you know it's okay we need to use words to communicate so that was two kinds of uh, healing processes where my guides guided me to look at things outside of me that bring me joy and heal the dark stuff that comes, that dims that joy, and then to look within me and find where the joy comes um, from within me of just being me, which is really, really magnificent. It's really freaking amazing. Uh, and they guided me to heal that, those blocks. And in both instances, I just noticed that joy is something natural that comes just by itself like this is us this is our soul expressing itself uh almost like uh, you know how human beings we breathe all the time and we don't even notice it well i felt that joy is something very very natural for the soul that just happens it's like it's almost like that's the essence of us as souls joy um that is and i think that's why i saw it so much connected to uh, my ray of light so to speak and then connected to source consciousness it's like i felt like it's almost like a spinal connection between my soul and the light of everything 
Okay, I like that word, the light of everything. I feel like that light is always in a constant state of joy. And also, when we uh, become aware of it, we feel joy. And that joy may come from different experiences, such as um, asking the light questions and receiving answers. That feels joyous. And also realizing, becoming aware of that that light is conscious of us and loves us. And there's this like really, really special feeling of being loved by that tremendously fantastic, magnificent light. And it just feels very special that that light sees me, you know, and loves me. It's just a super amazing feeling. And I just feel a gigantic connection, almost like, you know, like we have a spinal cord where all the nerves are concentrated there and then they go to other parts of our body. And I just feel like uh, the emotion of joy is almost like the spinal cord of our connection with that light of everything. And I forgot to mention that, but sometime in the beginning of my discovery of joy, um, one of the things, one of the biggest things that I had to heal was um, my guides guided me to take a look at why I have a resistance to feeling joy in general, not like when you're looking at outside, when you're looking at inside, just a general feeling of joy. Um, and I went back, I, I, and the reason that I just keep jumping uh, very quickly to like a summary because I don't want this video to be long, but the actual process took hours and hours and hours and days. And uh, I think it's like 20 days now that I've been discovering joy. So um, the real process is much deeper, but I want to save time. So I just jump directly to some kind of bright spots and the reason i want to share this particular healing is because i feel that this actually does should probably resonate with other people um because let me show you so uh, when i was digging into why i have a resistance to feeling joy in general like a general resistance um i was shown this um one of my lifetimes where i was this young like a teenage young woman, maybe 19 or something. Um, and I was in a village and we were all playing around with other uh, young people um, in some kind of a field. And we were really experiencing a lot of joy. And I really let myself have a lot of you know, experience joy naturally. And that's, that's an unusual feeling because in this life, I don't allow myself to feel joy. I don't allow myself to give into it because I have this like resistance, like put a cap on it, put a lid on it. So in that lifetime, I actually didn't have a lid on it and I just felt joy. And what happened was one thing led to another and um, well, I have had adult relations with a young man and um then i mean it was all joyous and beautiful and then in my village people found out that this is what happened between me and this person and there were a lot of like old women who just shamed the hell out of me they publicly humiliated me they publicly shamed me they said many many horrible things i'm sure you can imagine and um punished me even physically and they said something like you can't be relied on you can't be trusted um and that was just so painful and they didn't kick me out of the village i actually ended up living my life there in the village but from then on i felt like an outsider like they kicked me out but yet I'm still living there. And I felt like I never belonged in that village because nobody, because I had the stigma to me that you are a bad person. You know, we can't rely on you. We can't trust you. You 
you know, you behave like this irresponsibly. Um, so I always had the stigmatic label on me like a bad person. And partly I actually agreed with that. I believed them that, oh, I must be a bad person. And um, then in my brain or in my, I should say in my soul memory, I have created this rule that says, hey, whenever you experience joy, put a lid on it, you know, stop it, limit it. Um, don't give in to it because if you allow yourself to feel joy 100% freely, you're going to end up doing something that is going to cause you to regret it, to be punished, to be kicked out or, you know, labeled, stigmatized to. So, and there is also like this living assumption within me that I'm a bad person. Because I've been told that, and at some point, you know, if your whole life somebody believed, all people that you know believe you're a bad person, well, I accepted that belief. I'm like, oh, yeah, I am a bad person. I can't be trusted with joy because joy will take me to do things that are bad because I'm a bad person. So there was a bunch of stuff to heal there. My self-perception as a bad person intrinsically bad person <laughs> and um i also saw some uh, how do you call it parallel uh, instances in this lifetime to for example even as young as being a kid um uh, there was one specific memory where i was experiencing joy and i gave in to joy when i was like a kindergarten student in a dance class and what happened was I ended up playing around and I got kicked out of class and um, somehow I felt like all of the people, particularly women, like older women working in that dance school, because I was wondering the holes of that dance school, were um, shaming me and um, saying that uh, they didn't say anything, but in my imagination i projected onto them that lifetime when the women shamed me and publicly humiliated me and said you're bad it's your fault you can't be trusted i i actually recreated that experience as a kid in a dance school when i was kicked out of my dance class where it's almost like my belief system that i should put a lid on my joy put a cap on it put a lid on it um it, that that rule structure almost became like refreshed and confirmed. Like, look, I experienced joy. I was pub publicly humiliated and I was punished. And I ended up having pain and suffering because apparently I can't be trusted to feel joy because I'll do something bad because I'm a bad person. <laughs> so that was a like a gigantic line of healing that I had to do to... Um, clear some of the resistance to me feeling joy in general so i could say that this about like 20 day um experience of uh d discovering diving into my joy discovering it and healing it and then rediscovering it again um just focusing on the emotion of joy for 20 days it has given me first a better ability to experience joy in my life. I have kind of freed myself, at least in part, to feel more joy in my life. Second, I have kind of built a kind of momentum for myself to always be consciously um, digging into a possible things that I can find to heal and to let go of so that I can experience more joy. It's like I have done this every day for 20 days, like the whole, all every day I was doing this, discovering joy, healing my ability to experience joy. And it has built a momentum in my thoughts, almost a habit that now when I look at stuff or I look within myself or whatever I'm doing, I have this question in me, hey, could I be experiencing joy more than this? And uh, catching instances of, oh, you know, 
I could be experiencing more joy from this. Let's take a look and let's heal that. So it builds a kind of momentum, almost like a habit, um, to be more aware of instances of joy. Actually, even just be more aware of experiencing joy. When I feel joy, I'm like, I know that because I was, you know, discovering joy. And I know this film, this is joy. <laughs> So I guess these are the three things that um, I got. And I hope that me sharing this experience with you has given you some ideas into what you might want to do to discover your own emotion of joy and how to heal and clear stuff away and let go of stuff so that um, you can also somehow free yourself more to experience more joy in your life. If you like this video, please click like and subscribe so I know that this kind of content is appreciated and so that I can create more of it. Also, if you'd like to book a shamanic healing session with me, you can email me at expansionscapes at gmail.com. Uh, one of the things that we can do is for me to help you with this process of um, you know, diving into you experiencing joy and to heal whatever it is that uh, is presented to heal so that you can experience more joy. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you again. Bye.